My lipstick and I welcome you to episode three. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Towers. You're at Goody Two Sticks Knits, where every piece of knitting tells a story. Today, this shawl is going to tell its story. You're going to learn to do an applied I-cord edge. You will meet fun-loving designer Kathy Lewinsky and my darling knitting group from the Marine Mills Folk School in Marine on St. Croix, Minnesota. And you're going to find out the winner of the last giveaway and get a glimpse of the new one. So stay tuned. Let's announce our winner right off the bat. The winner of these two skeins, worsted weight, 100% superwash, merino wool, 100 grams, 220 yards. Well, drum roll, please. Congratulations to D. Warren. Your comment said, I enjoyed your podcast. I like the idea of putting a message in the sweater. D. Warren? please message me on either Ravelry.com or Instagram. I'm Goody Two Sticks at both places. Uh, my contact information will be in the show notes below. When you get in touch with me, we'll figure out where I should send the, this prize. Congratulations, and I hope you enjoy it. Moving along to the hot off my stick segment. See these? They're drumsticks. Hot off my sticks is this cozy winter shawl by Melanie Neilinger. Look at this thing. Want you to see those cables and the lace. I love cables and lace mixed together. And this mix, mixes several kinds of cables, a crossover cable with a regular turned cable with lace, lace mesh. This shawl is done in Malabrigo worsted yarn in the sealing wax color on size 10 needles. This is a fun shawl to make because it keeps your interest when you're working on it. You can watch a movie and still work on it. Well, let me clarify. Not any movie, maybe a detective movie you don't want to watch, but you know if you're watching a Hallmark movie and you already know how it's going to turn out, then you can knit it while you're watching a movie. No. No, we are not going to use the adjective cheesy for Hallmark movies. Yes, I'll go with formulaic. But honestly, once in a while, when you can't control any of the circumstances around you, isn't it pleasant to know that if you're going to sit down and watch a show, it's going to have a happy ending? There are times we, when we all need happy endings, if you ask me. So, this shawl is a Hallmark movie type shawl. Our featured designer today is Kathy Lewinsky from my home state of Minnesota. Kathy Lewinsky is Kat Borrow on Ravelry.com. She has a website, Just Crafty Enough. Dot com. On Instagram, she is just underscore crafty underscore enough. She also sells patterns at nitpicks.com. And all this contact information will be in the show notes below. Here's a picture of Kathy in a winter cap at a Minnesota Twins game. Yes, this is part of our state culture bundling up for baseball games early or late season. And we love our Minnesota twins around here. I'm going to quote a little bit from Kathy's website. 
Kathy spent most of her professional life in the music business, but was always doing something crafty on the side. She's inspired by the Scandinavian style so popular in Minneapolis and by all the beautiful things she sees when traveling with her husband, Matt. Her crafts have been featured in Better Homes and Gardens Holiday Crafts and at the Manchester Science Festival. She's addicted to designing and knitting color work mittens and has won four ribbons at the Minnesota State Fair. Right now, Kathy is working on some new mitten patterns, though much of her time is spent getting ready for the Yarn Over Convention that she's helping to organize with the Minnesota Knitters Guild. I want you to see several of Kathy's patterns that I just am crazy about. My favorite is this Hello Sailor hand warmers pattern. Perfect for spring in Minnesota. And I love the inspiration of the old nautical tattoos. Isn't that cute? Look at these April shower mittens. Boy, would they come in handy at a baseball game. The Scandinavian influence that she mentioned is very apparent in this Mitten Garland Advent calendar. And if you look really closely, you'll see the Mitten Garland that I knit from her pattern in the background above the drums. It is a fun thing to knit, and it is kind of a perfect summer knit because it's very portable, and if you knit it now, you'll have it all done when December 1 rolls around. These Shetland Peary mittens are sensational. Look at this rich design. And the Kyoto mittens. Aren't they peaceful looking? They're very appealing to me. Kathy, thank you so much for allowing me to feature you today. Ah, now I'm going to teach you how to knit an applied I-cord edge. Why should you knit an I-cord edge? It's very simple. It's beautiful. It looks nice from the front and from the back. In this episode is an abbreviated teaching for a more extended version that also includes how to round a corner and pick up stitches for an I-cord edge. See my applied I-cord video. I-cord typically uses two, three, or four stitches. I have successfully done it up to six stitches wide. Take a look. First, I'm going to show you Elizabeth Zimmerman's method. That was for doing an applied I-cord that is in the same color as the piece of work you're applying it to. Then I'm going to show you Joyce Williams' method, which is when you're using a contrast color I-cord. I'm going to do it all in a contrast color, however, so that you can more easily identify if the stitches I'm working on are cord stitches or project stitches. So getting started, I'm going to cable cast on three stitches by inserting the right needle between the first and second stitches on my work, pulling a loop through and then using the left needle, I will twist that stitch as it goes on the left needle by inserting it through the right side of the loop on my right needle. There we go. Let's do that one more time and explain it. The right needle goes between, not into, the first and second stitch. I draw a loop through and inserting the left needle through the right side of that loop, I transfer it to the left needle. We only need one more stitch for this I-cord demo. And there we go. So we'll begin our applied I-cord. Knit the first two cord stitches. And the last cord stitch, I will knit together with the first project stitch, but I'll do them both through their back loops. See that? 
And there you have it. Then we'll transfer those stitches back to my left needle. We'll do this one more time. Simply knit the first two stitches of the I cord. And then I will knit the last cord stitch together with the first live project stitch, and I will do it through both of their back loops. There we have it. Transfer the stitches back. Now I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to work a few more stitches. Okay, I've got a few more stitches here uh, done. And so you're going to be able to tell more easily what I'm talking about when I'm talking about blips showing through of the main color. Do you see this? See what that looks like? So let's learn the Joyce Williams method if you're using a contrasting color I cord. I guess I better switch these back to the left needle. Okay, you knit your first two I cord stitches just the same way. Then you slip the last I cord stitch purlwise and do a yarn over, bringing the yarn under the right needle and over it so that your working yarn winds up in the back again and then knit the first live project stitch. Pass the slipped stitch and the yarn over together over the last stitch. And transfer the I-cord stitches back to the left needle. Let me show you this one more time. Knit the cord stitches up to the last stitch. Slip that stitch purlwise, yarn over, knit the first project stitch, and pass both the yarn over and slip stitch over the stitch you just worked. And transfer the cord stitches back to the left needle. I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to work to the edge I have worked up to the very edge using up the last stitch on the project needle. And I'm going to show you the difference between these two methods. This is the method for not doing contrast edge. You see the blips. This is Joyce Williams method with the spare motions done to cover up those blips. And I think it's very effective. This is what it looks like on the back side. Isn't that tidy? Even on the back. Both of them look very nice on the back and the front. Joyce Williams' method is slightly beefier than Elizabeth Zimmerman's. Both of them are beautiful. The story about that shawl and the hopeful couple. Well, they learned about a little person one day in Korea. And that little guy became their son. And then a couple years later, they learned about a little person in South America and, and she became their daughter. Those darling little people became US citizens. They grew up they became educated, and now they're wonderful adults. Well, one day, the little girl, all grown up, said, Mom, will you knit me this shawl? And I said, yes. You guys, we're an international family. Yes, we are. And my daughter, is proud to call herself a Latina from South America. But we are proud and thankful to call this lovely Latina ours because she's our daughter. And she is the model here, modeling this cozy winter shawl. 
These kids of ours, along with our son-in-law and grandson, are our biggest blessings. You will meet some of our other guys after I do a little more convincing that they should be on my channel. This is an opportune time to remind you that we are a family-friendly channel and all inappropriate comments will be deleted. Thank you for being respectful. Before I give you a glimpse of our next giveaway, let me ask you a question. Are you part of a knitting group? Do you need a knitting group? Would you like to be part of my knitting group? I'll share my darling knitting group with you if you'd like. I want you to meet just a few in my knitting group today from the Marine Mills Folk School in Marine on St. Croix, Minnesota. Here they are. So, my sweet knitting group said, the next giveaway should be green because St. Patrick's Day is coming up. And of course, they were right. So, for our next giveaway, what do you think of these? So pretty, huh? Okay, this one, the giveaway includes both skeins. I'll tell you about this skein. Fingering weight, 100 grams, 50% merino wool, 25% super fine alpaca, 25% nylon. And yes, I dyed it myself. And the other skein is this yarn from Mirasol. It is also fingering weight, but its content is 40% wool, 40% silk, which gives it a beautiful sheen, 20% viscose. And it says some more things, but since I'm wearing glasses instead of microscopes today, I'm not going to read it to you. So, to enter for these two skeins. After this episode, both leave a comment and if you are not yet subscribed, also subscribe. Best wishes to everybody who enters. My heart health tip for the day is this. 
There's always part of somebody's story that we don't know. Often we only see the tip of the iceberg. So let's all be slow to jump to conclusions. And if we are going to make a mistake, let's err on the side of grace. Thank you for joining me today. Happy day.